an opening statement on coach, kind of address where we're at at this point in the season, and then we'll go into questions. Well, we have two very tough opponents this week, and uh, I'm anxious to see what kind of mental frame of mind our guys will be in today after a heartbreaking uh, loss on, on Saturday. Can you talk about that game on Saturday, the first half, I know you were very upset with the uh, lack of effort, and then the second half they came back and closed a 20-point deficit. What do you think happened there in the first half, and what did you see in the second half of that game? Well, we tell the players constantly, all the time, that uh, – you can't really execute very well until you give great effort. If you're not working very hard, you're easy to guard, so your offense is not going to click. If you're not guarding your man really hard and playing good team defense, you're probably going to give up a lot of points. And that's what happened. In the first half, we gave up 40 points. Our defense was not very good. Our offense lacked execution and, and, and precision. And all of that is, is truly based on effort. Players don't think that, though. Not my players, every player. They, they just think I'm good and I, I'm playing really hard all the time. They never, never think that way. But in the second half, we gave great effort. We only gave up, what, 23 points? And uh, we scored, uh, what, 33. So. We played a much better second half. Jim, the, the struggles of the last two years, obviously a lot of it not of your doing with the FBI. Has it sapped your energy, your enthusiasm at all, or has it made you even more determined and want to continue coaching long into the future? A good, it's a good question because you've hit the nail on the head. These, these past two seasons were, in my opinion, a direct result of the FBI investigation. It impacted our recruiting dramatically, and it's left us shorthanded um, to the point like we don't really have a sophomore class. Um, and that makes, makes a big difference. Um, what it's really required of me is to just be very, very patient, uh, to kind of understand the circumstances we are dealing with and how to overcome them. And the best thing for me is that I've got a great staff and they work really, really hard and they're helping us put the pieces in place that'll get us back much more competitive next season. And a great group of kids who are trying really hard, we, we just have not had enough ammunition. So you're determined just to, to see this through? Well into the future. Me? Yeah. yeah, I love coaching. I mean, I, honestly, I can't see myself doing anything else. I have no interest in ever retiring. I don't know what the heck I would do. I know my wife would not like it. Um, but the, the bottom line is uh, I see my job as one of of being a, a helper. Uh, on Saturday, one of my former players, Joe Gregory, who's a pastor of his church in Atlanta, came to the game. And I didn't get a chance to visit with him very long, but he visited with my wife extensively. And he told her the impact that uh, my coaching had on his life not just his basketball. He had a lot of great memories basketball-wise. But what our program taught him about sacrifice and hard work and discipline, and uh, he said he's, he's used it throughout his adult life. He used it as a parent to raise his two children. He has a boy and a girl, and he reflects back on all the things he learned when he was at Bowling Green. I've also had players from George Mason tell me that, and I just got a text message from Angel Rodriguez saying the same thing. So as long as I can, can be relevant in the lives of these young men, I'm going to try to be.
Well, for two years, we were, were asked questions that we had no answers to. Now, our recruiting is heading, headed in a very positive direction. And I think the players that will be coming in and, and eligible next year will have a, a, a very positive impact on us. Uh, and we're not done. You know, we still have two scholarships. We're still pursuing guys and, and working very, very hard to improve uh, the quality of our roster. Uh, this year is uh, a transition year. We're a little bit better. May not be reflected in wins and losses, but I see some improvement. Uh, but we've got we got a lot of work ahead of us, and, and this spring recruiting will determine how much we've improved. The fact that you see this year as a transition year, you're heading now into the ACC tournament, and then you know March and all that. How do you get the players to believe? you know, that they have a chance to make a run even though the thought is toward the future? Well, it's not that the thought is towards the distant future. Really, the thought is towards Wednesday. You know, you, you never know when things will click. Like Isaiah Wong, who would have dreamt that in early January, this is the player that we'd have in, in early March? Things clicked for him. Sometimes that happens for a team. You know, right now we have several guys who are very, very capable of making three-point shots. And when you play Virginia and Syracuse, you have to make threes. And if all of a sudden they start making shots, things open up for other guys, for a Cam Augusti driving to the basket or a Chris Likes getting into the open court. Those things occur because of the spin-offs of having somebody else stretch the defense out. So if you look at the shooting percentages from three-point range, we ha haven't had a great year shooting threes, including uh, our four or five man, Keith Stone and, and Sam Wardenberg, who to me are both very good three-point shooters, but they haven't been hitting threes lately. When they hit threes, we're a much better basketball team. There's a transition year, but I mean, really, if you don't have injuries, like, you know, you guys wouldn't have had... That well, that's the thing I'm saying. If, 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 if we were healthy right from the very beginning and stayed healthy, then we, we might have made the, the transition this year. Right, so my point is, like, are the pieces there returning and just these guys will help, or do you see the new guys as needing to be the guys? Like, that's sort of what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, well... Um, the, the answer is you need more than just one or two good players you, you, so that you can overcome the adversity that you're going to face, whether it's, you know, some teams are big and you have to have size. Well, there were, were games we, we, we only had a couple of guys and guys are hurt. You know, Dengak's out. You know, we don't have enough depth. Other times it's your guard play. Well, we had – Four games where we didn't have our two leading scorers, Chris Likes and Cam Augusti. Well, next year, uh, Harlan Beverly and, and Isaiah Wong are sophomores. They're no longer freshmen that you're having to rely on. You have sophomores who have been through it and are much more experienced. So it's having a roster that can compete in, in a league that presents all kinds of problems. So... You look at Virginia. Do you know who Virginia starts? How big they are right now? Okay, so Kihei Clark is 5'8 or 9. And, and then Wolda Tensai is 6'5. And Braxton Key is 6'8. And uh, Diakite is 6'10. And Jay Huff is 7'1. Right? So when you go 6'5", 6'8", 6'10", 7'1", that is a huge team, right? So how we can match up with them and defend them, because if you can't defend them, if they're scoring regularly, then you're having to take the ball out of bounds and go against their set defense, which is number one in the country. It's much better if you can defend them and stop them so you can rebound and run and get into the open court 
and try to get some baskets before they get their defense set. It's a chess match of I maybe I should go bigger. Well, if I go bigger, but those guys are not our scorers. Maybe I should go smaller like Virginia Tech did. Well, Virginia Tech had to make a bunch of threes in the second half to give themselves a chance, and we're not shooting threes well. One more for Coach L. <laughs> I want to ask about assists. We've talked about assists on and off all season, but there were only four. What assists? Right. There were only four, I think, in the game the other day. So what's with that? Will you please ask my team that? We do a drill called four on three where there's an open man. You, all you have to know is there's somebody that's open. Three guys cannot cover four, all right? And yet we will still, in the drill, in March, still take contested shots instead of find the open man. It's Some of basketball is skill. Some of basketball is basketball IQ. And you have to have the ability to have the skill and the IQ to execute. We have had players, I don't think I should mention his name, but he, he transferred out after his freshman year. And I told him, listen, if you ever figured out that not only can you score, but if you could hit the open man, you'd be a star. But you constantly are trying to score when you're being double and triple teamed. And, and – uh, you're never going to succeed until you start finding the open man. And he never did. He transferred and he ended up sitting on somebody else's bench. So some guys learn how to share the ball and find open men, and some guys never learn.